Yeah, uh, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, yes, uh, I can see your screen. Okay. So, yeah, so today's uh, session would be about AWS Green Latina. So before we go st uh, straight to the technologies, I, I would, just to give you an introduction about data evolution, as many of you know that our data data has uh, been growing rapidly this past two decades because of uh, internet, basically because uh, of uh, user created contents like social media uh, uh, contents, uh, like images, videos, and other types of data and also sensor data that are being collected by drones and uh, other sensors. So businesses have opted uh, in collecting those data and analyzing them to understand the, hum the humans behind those data and uh, to grow their businesses. Uh, so that uh, led to uh, different challenges because uh, when trying to analyze that huge amount of data and the first challenge is the data growth speed. So because it's, the data is uh, growing rapidly, uh, our system, uh, our data pipelines need to uh, keep uh, cope up with uh, the growth speed, and that's hard to do. And also processing a huge amount of data with our limited resources uh, uh, can be another challenge. And the third uh, reason is uh, the inability of normal uh, database to store huge amount of data and uh, different types of data and accessing those data, right? So uh, we face those challenges uh, in our company as well. Uh, so the pipeline that we used uh, to uh, fetch data uh, used to be uh, on our MR clusters. So it was written in Python script and uh, basically it ran on our AMR, AMR clusters so Arludio, the company I work in, uh, tries to uh, analyze data uh, from the raw uh, collected data, which means our data analysis and our data scientists need as raw data as they can get and to provide that efficiently and effectively uh, is really hard. But our uh, pipeline that we use to adopt uh, basically uh, caches some raw data uh, from our S3 uh, based on some filters back to our S3. Uh, that's a scheduled based on a, a scheduled Airflow DAG script, and then our different uh, our members members in our data science team uh, provide some parameters to filter uh, those raw data and get a filtered data from our uh, around ten terabytes of data. So that pro that means that we faced a different newer issues because we use our, uh, our AMR, AMR clusters for other purposes as well. So scaling was the biggest issue we faced uh, on our previous uh, pipeline. So we tried to look for other vendors who provided uh, services uh, that can help us process big data. And that's how we chose AWS Cluing Athena. So AWS Cluing Athena are basically um, Amazon managed S3 services that help uh, query uh, files directly from our S3 buckets. So what we do is uh, we crawl our uh, files stored in our, our S3 bucket, uh, and then that's uh, the crawled. Sorry about that. So the the crawled. So after the, uh, after we crawl our S3 objects, we get a metadata for those files, which means different information about uh, the files we store in our S3 bucket. And using that metadata, we query uh, and generate reports. So AWS Athena basically use the metadata or the schema generated by AWS Glue to generate reports in a very short amount of time. So we chose AWS services because uh, it's really easy to integrate uh, this new pipeline uh, to our, uh, this new pipe, to adapt this new pipeline because our files are already stored in our, in our S3 buckets. 
So our new pipeline looks something like this. This is the updated version of the first pipeline that I showed you guys. So uh, our data scientists and analytic team members would provide some parameters and we uh, generate a query based on those uh, parameters and send them to uh, Athena so that Athena could just handle all the processing uh, for us. So Athena would use the data catalog that we generate and update uh, every few hours and store our results back into AC3. So this, this solves our scaling issues uh, for our company. Uh, although uh, AWS Athena uh, has its own advantages, it also has its downfalls, which means it doesn't provide uh, an optimum way of uh, querying uh, our data. That means we need to do that ourselves. So we need to optimize our queries. We need to optimize the way we store uh, our data that might uh, include uh, partitioning our data sources and storing them uh, in uh, columnar data formats like um, Parkway and Avaro. Uh, I think Bini and uh, Betty showed you guys that uh, Snowflake provides this for us, but AWS Athena doesn't. So we need to do that ourselves. Uh, before I go into showing you some queries, uh, do you have any questions? Yes, Rafa, go ahead. I think Rafa's uh, response okay. was more on uh, if uh, they could see your so screen. It's not a reason. There are no questions. Maybe I can proceed to uh, the demo. So this is a WS Athena. Uh, console so you can write your queries here and it can give you a preview of your output but the actual data uh, is actually saved on our s3 buckets uh, it's a location that you configure here on the settings so this uh, table that we're trying to query is actually uh, a bucket stored in s3 so if we go here this is AWS Glue Console. So you can see that it's stored here. The table that I showed you on Athena Console is the location is actually uh, the source. So we can maybe open it. And this is basically the metadata that it provides us, that the Glue, the, uh, the AWS Glue service provides us, right? So you can see the different data types and the schema here and it shows uh, the number of files and other important information so that uh, AWS Athena can easily query the actual files instead of uh, creating another table or another database. So this is basically an S3. As you can see there, this is, this is our bucket and these are the files so you can and they're partitioned by date and hour. So these are the actual corporate files that we're trying to query using our AWS Athena console. So let's say we want to query uh, a day amount of data. So when we try to query first, let me, okay, so. As I said before, to optimize our queries, we uh, try to convert uh, files that are stored in JSON and CSV files into parquets. So this one is the original, the JSON uh, format file. So this would take us longer than the, uh, the files that we converted into parquets. So if we try to just select type for a day, it would take us around so it's running, so. So it's still running. This is just for a day worth data.
So you can see that uh, it took like around 32 seconds and it's scanned around 2.13 gigabyte of data. And Athena uh, cost us uh, based on the amount of data you scan. So the more data you scan, it means the more uh, cost it would, the more it would cost. So just to select this type column, it took us around 32 seconds and it scanned around 2.13 gigabyte. So when we convert the same source into park rate and query, the query is the same, we just change it, uh, the file format into park rate. And when we run this, it should take us much less time. So. So it just scanned around 2.5 megabytes of data and it finished in 15 seconds. So because park rate is a columnar data format, it does not scan the whole data. So it only scans the, the columns that we select and it's very fast as you can see. So maybe you can think, you can imagine uh, uh, how optimized our queries would be if we try to scan two years worth of data. Right, so if I scan the whole column, and it would, uh, it would definitely, uh, it would make a huge difference when saving it in Parkwood and uh, in other file formats. So, yeah, we can also use other optimization methods like using window functions, and that saves us a lot of uh, cost and time as well. So. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it for the introduction. Um, hello, Deborah. Are you still there? Did you lose you? Sorry about that. My brother crashed. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so do you have any questions? Um, guys, are we in the call? Is there any form of interaction? Do we know if you're listening? Could you get just a communication that um, you can actually hear what's going on in the call? Yes. Okay, so does silence mean that uh, we've all understood uh, Deborah's introduction to Amazon Athena? Yes, Henok. Hi, uh, I have one question. I'm not that familiar with columnar data, and I was wondering uh, if we need to specify the schema for it, or we just uh, convert the type of data we have into just uh, the columnar format. Yeah, so it depends on uh, what you're using to convert it to convert to park read, but uh, pandas can do that for you. So you can just specify uh, the file and then you can convert it into park width. Okay. 
Okay, thank you for that, Henok. Is there another question? Have we understood what Amazon Athena is and how we can use it in our project this week? And uh, Deborah, just to ask, uh, have we gone through the Amazon Glow or we'll be doing that um, next? Yeah, so Amazon Glue is uh, a way to generate metadata for our files so that Athena can query them. So that's what I showed. Maybe I can show it again if you haven't seen it. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay if you had shown. Maybe I missed uh, that, that part. I don't know why there's so much silence. They're, they're usually more active yeah. than this. Let me just. Uh, Maybe it's yeah. because they're not using admin group for this uh, week's assignment. Yeah, but there should still be more questions. Maybe do you have a question to ask, to throw? Maybe to better the understanding of uh, those two tools. Maybe just for them to answer. Because if there's no questions, you're assuming that they've understood everything you've said. Do you have a question for them? Uh, so, Matilda, yeah. So, uh, Athena obviously costs us uh, uh, on, based on the amount of data you scan. So, for every query, uh, the amount of data, for every one terabyte of data you scan per query, you uh, get priced around $5. Yes, it does. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for the for the presentation, uh, Deborah. So um, I, I, I jumped in a little bit late while you were, you were explaining about uh, how, optimi how optimizing of the data is done by converting the, maybe the data into, okay. Uh, so my question is that I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't around when you were explaining the, like how, like the, then, like it's a sense, like, um, so, would it like just work on the AWS uh, buckets or something like? Is it just for uh, scanning the the AWS? Um, maybe the, the the data that we store there, or yeah, can we just elaborate on that? Uh, okay, so if I get your question right, uh, so you want to know uh, how converting them to park rate is optimizing our queries? Okay, just if you could just uh, maybe just recap on basically just what, why are we using Athena? Um, because from when I jumped in, you were explaining how it like uh, optimizes the query. So uh, maybe you could just maybe uh, use a use case for maybe kind of our project. Uh, maybe we store our data in the S3 um, and we want to query it. So like is Athena just like the middleware there where it's just assisting us to query data from the database in a more like a uh, fast way or yeah so so instead of so every satina comes so that you can query the files directly instead of uh, populating them to databases first so it allows us to query or to write queries or to run queries on semi-structured data like uh, json files so let's say you have data stored in your s3 buckets right uh, just similar to the one I showed. So I wanted to uh, to query those those files directly and do do that really quick. So I use Athena. Uh, Athena helps us do that in a very optimized and uh, in, in a very optimized way. So that's why we're using Athena. And because uh, we don't want to uh, aggregate and store in some sort of way because our way of storing uh, data in our company is more uh, data, uh, data lake house. So we want the raw data to be exposed to our data scientists and our data analysts. So they can just run SQL queries on our raw data sources and uh, get uh, the data they want. So that's why we're using uh, AWS Athena, if, I, if that answers your questions. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, it does. So basically, we're just uh, using is uh, using it as a means of uh, querying the data lake in a more uh, optimized way. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Thank you for that, Titus. Okay, Stella, you can go. Stella. Well, kindly um, repeat the the where now glue comes in, please. Um, I think I missed it. Yep. So, uh, should I share my screen? Uh, okay. So maybe I can just explain explain it. So, for Athena to query those files directly, we need uh, some sort of uh, metadata, right? So. AWS Glue provides or generates that uh, metadata for us. So it provides that kind of information about our files to AWS setting. That means where they're stored, uh, what kind of schema uh, they're uh, following, and other important stuff. So uh, Amazon Athena can uh, query those files directly. Does that answer your question, Stella? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Stella, as well. So I also had one question. So they are all the on. Sorry, we can only use uh, Amazon Athena with uh, the S3 buckets. We cannot use it with maybe another platform. I think that's my question. So it's only used uh, with the S3 buckets. Uh, so I'm not sure about that, but uh, for our case, uh, most of our data is stored in uh, our S3 buckets. So it's really easy to integrate with uh, AWS Athena. So it's really easy to query them through uh, AWS Athena. Okay, okay, thank you for that. So, okay. I don't know if uh, since this week, I don't think I will be mainly, we're not mainly using S3 bucket this week. So I don't know if maybe if they want to do some form of practice with uh, Amazon Athena and Glow, what would be advised? Because I think the main idea is just get introduced to these tools and practice with them. So if our data is not in S3 bucket, what's the best way to actually practice with these tools? Edibal, I see you've just joined us. The tutorial is ah. ended. Uh, okay, okay, welcome. Okay, now um, I think it's so the point is not just only for this week, actually. So I think the aspect is that this week should provide everyone what a data warehouse and the different tools. And everybody is going to ask you, like in the interview, okay, things that you don't know and getting familiar with data model differences between ATL and LT and knowing which tools sometimes are good and what are the really intricate details in different tools when you move. It seems almost always easy when you talk about it, but then as soon as you start talking, as soon as you start working on it, I think there are lots of complexities and I, I unfortunately, I missed your, your talk, uh, Deborah, um, but it probably, probably people have seen, but so given that, it is the most one of the most important thing I want to ask. So few people, especially who would who are now in the data engineering stream, to summarize it for me, what Deborah talked and what they understood. So can you at least just uh, thumbs up or something in the Stella? You are keeping your word. You said you would be able to answer and talk, you would come and you are doing it. Wonderful, go on. Okay, so from Deborah's tutorial, I have learned that um, when we have uh, data, we're going to need um, uh, Glue to generate metadata about um, how the data is in the S3 bucket. And then I think- It doesn't have to be the S3 bucket. I mean, it just anywhere in a storage, in a file storage. Oh, okay. 
and then Athena is going to help optimize um, querying, uh, the querying process. So she elaborated with an example and we saw um, when you use uh, Athena, the query takes a shorter time. Okay, that's a very good summary. Anyone else? I mean, you shouldn't disappoint. I mean, it's really, uh, is that the afternoon? Okay, maybe you haven't drink coffee or something. Tetus, she just pulled okay. okay, go. Oh. Okay, uh, just to add up on what Stella said, um, about the, 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 the idea of making it uh, fast, uh, the example that was used was converting basically maybe a CSV file to a more like a, a fast, uh, fast kind of data like uh, Poké. So yeah, just to add up on how like uh, it optimizes the, the query, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, let, let me say, okay, from the four tutorials as well. JC. Uh, okay, maybe just to build up on that, I have seen that I was trying to look at Athena in the place of Redshift, mm -hmm. and I've seen that with Athena, it's possible to actually write queries to unstructured data. So you can write a query to um, see JSON, to a JSON file, which is not something I've seen before. Correct. But how did that? So what is the, the overall picture that you have understood in terms of like, now are you in which stream are you are you choosing to go Daisy. um stream of the text I mean, data engineering uh, web3 machine learning um i think i'm still stuck on data engineering but last week's web three project stuck. was pretty are, interesting i think <laughs> I think you're not stuck. You don't, I think, use the word like, I am a data engineer, or, you know, okay. it's, it's not stuck. Um, and you have to know, Deborah, she started probably as machine learning engineer, interested. Mm -hmm. And she just probably, you can ask her now, she much more fell in love now with data engineering. And, and so oh. it's not like, I mean, data engineering is probably the coolest of, and then usually it's also like the easiest, I mean, in terms of wherever you go, the most impactful thing is data engineering. So it's not like you are stuck. Um, it's it's only when you learn machine learning, whatever, sometimes sound school, but in real life, data engineering is the still the, the boss. Um, okay, so um, I take that back, so. Sorry, I'm okay, a data so, engineer still. Okay, so what is, your of, what is your perception of now, the data engineering ecosystem? What, what is what is something that you have got because you are here than you were, you know, before? Um, I think what I've gotten really clearly right now is how important data engineering is to like a uh, rest of the data ecosystem um the significance attached to maybe data collection itself and just being able to clean data from the different sources i just say maybe there's so many tools that can be used for the data engineering process that can uh get you easily confused on what to choose and what to choose okay good anyone else wants to summarize their version, like in particular ending with, you know, how, what Athena, Glue and anything that Deborah talked uh, from the other data engineering tasks that you have been doing, data engineering tutorials you have got. I want a very good job ready summary. I'm challenging you.
Amal. Okay. So I'll come to you, Henok. Amal. Hi. Yes, you have a bell? Yes. Can you give me your summary of the engineering? Ecosystem, tool chains, tech stack, whatever you understood. Okay, from what she said, um, I can say that. Not uh, only from what she said. I, I want, so she said something, but you have been doing data engineering for now a number of weeks. Okay. So just use all that and then in combination exactly with what, of course, the word of it. Okay, related to this context, I can say that uh, the databases and uh, data from the data warehouses or S3 data uh, goes into the Amazon Athena um, where and we can uh, maybe see the analytics, right? Yeah. Yeah, before using the tools like uh, Power BI. Visualize Hello? the data. Yeah, to visualize the data. Okay. Okay. Look, what have you understood today? Okay, how to integrate uh, the AWS um, technology into data engineering field? From using the S3 buckets to Athena. Okay. Great. Thanks, Henok. Okay, so my understanding so far is that like the entire field of data and data engineering is about presenting, uh, like starting from like creating the data and also providing the data in a way that's uh, easily curable, curable, and also uh, in a way that's uh, fast and cost effective. So, uh, for example, uh, from the tools that we saw today, uh, if just by changing the way we save the data and using uh, a few uh, money, like AWS money services like uh, Glue and Athena, we can easily like uh, fetch uh, a large amount of data in a very like fast way. Uh, in that Coleman format allows us to have a, a better compression rate for our data, a better uh, like scanning uh, rate. So, uh, from uh, like to recap of what I said, it's just about uh, storing and making that data accessible in a, like in an easier or in, in an effective way. Great, a very good summary. Very well, good summary. Anyone else? I mean, Deborah, I know that you have another call. Also, you have the tent. If you have anyone to go, anytime you want to go, you can. Um, yeah, anyone else? Or Deborah, do you have any last minute things to say? Uh, um, actually, not really. Uh, I was just going to say. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I have to jump into another call, so. Yeah. yeah bye. Thanks. Uh, Matilda, I'm not sure that is correct. I mean, I think it's it's not true that it is easier to query Athena than Postgres, um, but it is a way of querying unstructured file, as Daisy said, in such a way that it is faster. You can do it at very fast, large amount of data um, and scalable because it's also managed, as Henoch said. So something, okay. So who can classify how they understood the tech stack into basically a query engine, a distributed data a database, and data warehouse, data lake. So in these spaces, whatever they have seen. And then where does Kafka and others sit in this tech stack? 
do you have it in your mind? And you have to know, it's like when you are getting, you may not be able to design and create, but you are expected to understand in your head, like where things fit. Like how are the different technologies relate to each other and for what purpose? There are, of course, multiple, multiple options for one single service. But who's kind of going to present the tech stack they understood now of, an, uh, let's say, in a medium data engineering team, what they would be using? OK, so let me pause it here. And then let me leave it. Actually, let's leave it. But I want you to think about it. I want you to summarize your thought. Because next week, if you know that for your graduation, you basically have to provide a very summary, a 10 minute summary of the entire project that you have done in a, in a same in a, in a way. And that is very uh, an important element, prerequisite for your graduation. So it's not next week sorry the week after uh, on wednesday and thursday before graduation would probably be on friday that you have to summarize the things the different technologies in one the different projects it's kind of how they fall in, in which category and so you must start thinking okay you're not gonna be able to just not be able to relate whatever you have done and decompose so it's better to start from here on daisy um, please repeat the question you asked. I was, um, I was uh, actually saying, how does, in a data engineering, the different things that you have heard, I want you to start putting all of them in categories, as in the text stack sense. So this is for database, this is for communication, this is for transformation. There are these models, and these setups will be for this type of setup, and let's say ETL version, I would probably have this, this, this technologies that we have seen or that I know will be here. And then these technologies will be used for that. And then for the ELT, I have a different one. There is data warehouse and then there's data lake, how they relate in that tech stack. So I want you to start summarizing your thoughts, gathering them, putting tools here and there um, in such a way that you have a comprehensive understanding. Is that clear? Yes, it is. Thank you. So think about it because I'm not going to leave it. I will leave it now, but I will keep coming to it. So, and it's the most important thing you can do to yourself. And in that process, if you don't understand, ask and query in, in, in any place that you have the opportunity as well as read. The same is in the ML of sales. You have to think about the ML ops, the different tools that they have been using. You have to organize them into buckets and then take stack, you know, how, which technologies put together would form this and that. So I want you to summarize, start summarizing the different projects, the different tools that you use, and, and then associate them with the type of analytics engineer, data engineering. I mean, as a team, if you want to, it's not just one person, but as a team, as a data engineering team, analytics engineering team, uh, machine learning engineering team, and web three engineering team, okay? I want you to present it that way, most of your understanding. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Thank you, Anastasia. So you have anything to add, Anastasia? I, I, I hijacked the tutorial. No, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you for joining and actually helping with that little bit more understanding. So I just wanted to make something maybe a little bit clear. I had I remember asking Deborah if uh, we only use Athena to connect to the S3 buckets, and uh, she said uh, that's what they use. So she wasn't aware. I've done a quick research, and I think there are connectors available. So for anyone who'd be interested in actually practicing at dinner, I think they can find it connected and maybe connect with Snowflake if you'll be trying that this week or maybe your uh, MySQL or Postgres. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Nothing else for me. And um, you, you have to know what also all of these tools, whether you call it, you know, AWS or, you know, like this cloud Azure or Google, most of them they use 
managed version of open source, usually Apache open source. Okay, so they are, for example, Athena is basically Presto. It's an open source. Okay, and Glue is Hive, Hive table. So it's a, it's a, a, a Apache Hive. And then there are Amazon P, like Apache Pig, Apache this and Apache that. So most of them are basically the, using this. So just you you can actually run it in your computer. If you want to run a Athena, just use download and install um, uh, Presto in your computer. If you want to run Glue, just do uh, install um, Hive. It's the same, similar things. One is just managed and it has a different name. Okay. Hope that's clear. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.